are these one minute grips an affordable and quick way of regripping your golf clubs or a giant waste of money? Let's get into it. feel that bad either. And that is because tennis players aren't stupid enough to play in the rain. Guys, how you doing? Welcome back to a brand new video. It's Simon down here at my flat attempting to regrip some clubs with these and I'm interested are they actually any good we're going to talk about price point we're going to talk about how easy they are to put on what clubs if you were to attempt to put these on are actually suitable and why would you use these instead of let's say a conventional grip and let's be honest it's probably price point as well as ease if you're used to regripping your clubs and you've got a workshop and a shed and the tools and everything else then it's an easy process, but if you're a beginner and you've just bought or been handed down a set of clubs and you're now looking at getting them re-gripped, majority of the time the grips are going to cost more than the club. So the main argument here is cost and time. Now if you've never put a golf grip on before and haven't got the tools, it is quite a difficult process to get your head around and you're probably going to ruin a few grips when you do it the first few times, whether you get it stuck on there or they're twisted, stretched, you name it. I'm just looking on eBay here. The cheapest available Golf Pride or Lambkin uh, genuine grips are going to be £6 to £7, something like that. Obviously, the multi compounds are £10. The Align grips are going to be £15. And the three on the floor there on Amazon, I bought for £15 for the three. If you've got 12 pack, that's £35. So there's a significant price difference between a standard grip and these. And these you can do by yourself, no tools no workshop opposed to the gold pride and lambkin that you would need a workbench and tools and everything else or go to a pro shop but then it's going to be even more expensive and if you've got a set of irons like this for example and this is kind of what i imagine most people are trying to figure out i want this regripped but i don't want to spend 100 pounds on the whole set of clubs to get it regripped because i could buy this whole set for 100 pounds which means that this 14 pound 30 pound alternative is it actually worth it? I've seen this being done in videos. The majority of people actually do this with like a dry tack grip, which kind of defies the point for me because the majority of people that this is kind of appealing for will just have like a standard grip that doesn't have that kind of butt end. So I'm interested to see what it looks like as a finished product because there it's going to sit quite nice and flush under that. But here, does it just look like an overall mess? And this is kind of the idea. Is it worth doing this on a couple of clubs? So you just started, you've been given a 7-iron and a driver, you put this on so you've got a bit more feel and grip, which I think could be a good bonus and a cheap way of doing it. Or do you do your whole set of golf clubs with these? And then ultimately, do they stay on? How do they feel? Obviously this is going to add weight to the end here, so the swing weight is going to change, it's going to feel lighter overall. I've got many questions. Okay, so we've got the grip itself and then we've got two ties that obviously you can finish off the top and bottom with. Apologies for the camera angle, I left the tripod in the wife's car. I know, highly professional. Also comes with instructions on the back there on how to apply it. And I guess that is one of the main bonuses. Like, you don't have to use grip solution, you don't need to use double-sided tape, you don't need a vise. All the other bits and bobs you do with a conventional grip. So essentially you could just do this before you're about to go out, obviously it won't need time to dry, all that kind of stuff. But if it doesn't actually do its job, i.e. stay on securely, last more than, well realistically you want to make sure it's, you're getting at least a year out of it, otherwise it's just not worth it compared to the price difference of an actual normal grip. Quick read of the instructions again. I feel, I feel like I'm doing my first grip as a PGA um, trainee again. This is exactly the same feeling. You're like, oh God, don't mess it up again. Right then, here goes nothing. I believe it's supposed to go at a 45 degree angle to start off with. And again, this is my one concern is how it's got a tiny little glue dot there that sticks to the club. and. If it was that, as you saw at the start there, that kind of dry tack grip, I imagine it's going to stick better than it would to just a traditional tall velvet or something in that nature. 
Now there are a wide variety of colours as well. I went with white and black as so I think that's the most traditional. And um, uh, I actually really like the design in itself. You know, it does say to pull tight, go down. You can actually cut the excess off. You don't want to go too thick. And also, the other issue with this is that you could produce a bit of a ridge down the grip as well, which just won't feel great depending on what part of the club that you actually touch. Not so far, so good. I'm literally just overlapping it by like a couple of mil. So not to make it too thick. Again, like this is quite thin. Like I'd say like double sided tape, maybe a bit thicker than double sided tape. But on the outside of the grip that was already there, I'm already starting to feel like it's quite large already I should say. Uh, I think that's about, I think we're about there. Alright, so do I just cut that off now? And then if I cut that off, hang on, no that won't make sense. If I cut that off, or maybe I need to cut it at an angle then. Yeah, that makes sense because obviously that tapers down that way as well. Okay, so a bit fiddly. Now obviously I've cut it. I don't know whether it's probably just easier because I've cut the bottom of it. I don't know if it would be easier just to wrap it to the thickness of the grip itself, like the whole length. Um, uh, like if you cut it short, this bit obviously won't stick down at the bottom, so then you've got to be a bit fiddly. But I think we're going to be all right. Okay, I'm going to cut that end bit off because that's around and I don't want it to look too thick at the bottom. So I'm going to cut the last Alien Pro off the bottom there to do the top as well. To finish off this absolute masterpiece, first attempt. Mind you, it could be a one minute grip with a bit of practice. It's like a re-gripping full set of clubs takes me about 30 minutes now. Whereas when I started, it took me about two days. Like trying to hire an assistant to do the re-grips was very much economically not viable as you're paying the assistant eight pound an hour and they're making you probably about four pound an hour in re-grips. Right, I think we're done. First looks. To be fair, it doesn't look too bad at the top end because of that like Alien Pros. If you had opposite colour grip on the, um, uh, on the original club, it might clash a bit more. But overall, because I've got such a crazy design as well, you don't really know where it starts or finishes. It doesn't actually feel that bad either. Quite surprising. So it's the next day and it's endurance test. I'm gonna hit 100 balls with this grip on the seven iron and see exactly what it looks like. I'll show you obviously the video before and after exactly what it looks like now. And then let's have a look at it, what it's gonna look like in 100 balls. As well as that, I'm also gonna just try and see if I can get it off, i.e. twist it, pull it, bite it. Just try and give it a thorough test because I imagine that's what everyone's concerned with this is. Like it's literally just held on with a tiny bit of tape and I'm sure there's some kind of physics involved. I is kind of wrapped around and then, but I don't know. So making my way through these hundred balls on the range and at first I was actually very impressed. It felt very comfortable, um, even without a glove. I didn't want to wear a glove because I think that most people that would have this kind of grip or put this grip on top of their golf club wouldn't typically wear a glove just from the friction that you'd normally get. That being said, as we got to ball number 20, ball number 30, I started to feel the club sliding in my hands as my hands started getting a bit more sweatier. Not only that, we started rubbing against the shaft a bit more, ripped the thing for dear life, and that kind of messed up my swing, and to be honest, I have quite a strong grip anyway. It's not like I have a loose grip, and that's gonna be very similar to a lot of you guys. You're gonna put a lot of pressure on your thumb, you're gonna put a lot of pressure on the top hand, Therefore, how much is it going to wear? And I've only hit 90 balls or so with this club and I'm already starting to see some discoloration. I'm already starting to see a tiny bit wear where the grips are starting to overlap, move, slide. And then one of the assistants, Dom, at the range made a very good point. What happens if you were to get caught in the rain? Let's make it wet. Let's swing out here. I don't want to kill anyone. Even without hitting a few shots, I already know this is a bad idea. I'm prob I'll probably be better off just holding the steel shaft than what I'm holding at the moment. There's a very good reason why these kind of grips work fantastically for tennis rackets and not golf clubs. And that is because tennis players aren't stupid enough to play in the rain. However, to be fair to it, it's dried out quite quickly. I only hit 10 balls or so with the grip and you wouldn't actually tell that it's actually quite wet. So that is a bonus. But in the same breath, I do feel that if you were to 
want to play with these in the rain you would need a glove of some kind whether it's rain glove or a normal glove and i feel like if you were to use a glove with these as well and you have another fabric of friction i can't see these lasting more than three or four rounds and when you look at the alternative even though they're more expensive there's a reason they're made out of the material that they're made out of and there's a reason that the price is also potentially there and so for the final test i'm basically just going to grip it as hard as i can and twist as hard as i can and see what kind of damage i can actually do to this to kind of represent some kind of one month two months maybe three months worth of use and it's probably not the fairest test in the world and well you can see exactly how it's turned out but at the same time if i was to do this with a tall velvet multi-compound and a line grip and i did that for an hour two hours three hours definitely wouldn't look like that as my closing statement i have to say the general idea and thought process especially the diy element where anyone can do it pick it up apply it to any kind of golf club and have an added level of grip i think is fantastic but the price point i think is too expensive for the durability that this is actually going to provide as well as i do feel that if you were to practice with these over and over again you will learn to grip the club tighter and tighter just to basically hold on to the thing which isn't the whole point of a golf grip guys if you like this video leave it a like subscribe if you're new see you guys later morning tom hope you're doing well Good afternoon mate well done on the lesson and evening alan not a problem at all and Testing the G30s and the new gents on my way to the lock up. Go go pick up the mirror on.